I have to say that, I mean, words fail me in terms of how thrilled and honored I feel to receive the, the Jill Sanders Award. I, I wished I had known Jill Sanders. She must have been such a remarkable person to bring uh, Cadath from Sikotha, I guess, when she would have taken it over, and to bring it to the organization that, um, that, that, that Brian has, has inherited and, um, and continues to, to make, make the mark. Canada owes a lot to Jill Sanders and, uh, and her work. So, P. Coder, and when I look back on my life, I, 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 I really loved the time that I spent with P. Coder. I had the opportunity to be involved in the planning of P. Coder. And uh, so I can't say that I conceived it, but I was there through its gestation, its birth, its infancy, its adolescence, and into um, early maturity. It was a very weighty responsibility in service to society that um, for, for cancer drugs, we had the, to, to work so that we, and, and when you think of the stakeholders here, the multiple stakeholders with differing aspirations, we had governments, we had cancer systems, we had cancer patients, we had industry, and we had the public at large. And I remember thinking at the beginning and saying that we can't possibly please everyone with every decision that we make. But if we can adhere to the underlying principles and apply our analytic framework faithfully, we can earn the respect and trust of every constituency. And I would like to say that P. Calder has achieved that. Now, when you um, give an award to someone in the twilight of his or her career, you're at risk of, um, of, of hearing a few reflections and, uh, and maybe some, some, some themes or messages. And Brian did encourage me not just to get up and say thanks, which, uh, uh, and, and, and just the simple word wouldn't have been enough anyhow. But he had encouraged me to perhaps do a little reflection. So I reflected on my, um, my career from the early days. I, I trained and began practice in the 70s and 80s. And, um, and life sort of evolved since then. But the systemic therapy of cancer, as a medical oncologist, that was my field. And back in the, those early days, we had, systemic therapy had such tremendous promise. I mean, here was the modality that could work with advanced cancer beyond what surgery or radiation could tackle or after surgery and or radiation treatments had failed. And we had some early successes with leukemias, particularly in children and with lymphomas. And we felt at the time that it was only a matter of time before we could bring down the ramparts of advanced common cancers that have been such a thorn in the side of, um, of, of health for, for, for Canadians, for populations. But progress came painfully slowly. Back in those days, a new drug only came along every few years, and the, the breakthroughs were even more scarce, and progress seemed painfully slow. But we had the, as, as we were struggling in this desert of progress, we had the, this vision that the tremendous research efforts in understanding the cellular and molecular biology of, the, of cancer were one day going to yield fruit and give us better tools to fight this, uh, this disease. So at the turn of the century, spring was coming to the desert and new, 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 tr new treatments were beginning to pop up here and there like flowers after the spring rains. 
And <clears throat> we, we had suddenly drugs that were targeting specific pathways or specific gene mutations, drugs that were, were, were we had the, the beginning, the, the immunology had kept us, immuno, immunologists, I should say, had kept us on the edge of our seats for 30 years. And finally, we were beginning to see some promises in uh, immunology bearing fruit. And then this continued to increase and increase. And if you look today, you see the pace, you see the, the, that we, we now are not only having these new treatments coming right, left, and center in, um, in targeted therapy, in immunotherapy, but getting into very sophisticated treatments like gene therapy and CAR T cell therapy. Now, this was wonderful. This was just tremendous. But we had not foreseen that this cornucopia would arrive at the time when our health systems were, were drowning in this mudslide of increasing costs of health, an unsustainable projected future where there would be, so now that we had the increases in technology, where was the room to accommodate them within the system? And it was in the 2000s then that the provincial premiers recognizing that cancer within a, an unsustainable trajectory of overall health care co costs. Cancer was where the action was, and it was also coming at an even steeper slope in terms of the burden of, of new costs. And that was why the provincial premiers, looking at the pipelines of new drugs that were coming, had uh, conceived of peak odor. And I managed to say provincial premiers and pipelines in the same sentence there. <laughs> so I think that um, peak odor did wonderfully in terms of, its, um, of, 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 of fulfilling what the premiers set out for it to do. But as you see, and this conference is beautifully focused on the future, that we can't rest on these laurels. Uh, in, in effect, we have the, the wheels of discovery are spinning fast, the wheels of translation are spinning fast, but our health technology assessment seems to be mired in the 20th century in this brand new 21st century cornucopia. So we absolutely have to continue to evolve. And the focus of this conference on, on the, the shift from health technology assessment to health technology management is so perfectly suited to what we face today. And I look, as I, as I said, from the twilight of my career, I think of you who are, are in the early phases of your career in HTA, our students. And you're going to see evolutionary changes that we didn't dream of back in the, in, in the last century. And you're going to have the excitement to be part of this and to be leaders in it. So, I'd, and if I had one sentence for you, I would say, don't ever be seduced by good enough is good enough. Always strive to be better. And my other message is that, and this is from me, the oncologist, cancer is almost like a system within a system. And we can build on what we have done with P. Coder. And as we look to ways to move from HTA to HTM, perhaps the capsule of cancer can give messages that can, that can then be diffused elsewhere. So. Just in closing, let me say, you know, I used to be a bit cynical years ago. I would watch the Academy Awards and uh, someone would get an award and they'd come up and they would stand and thank everyone they'd ever met, it seemed. But you know, when you get an award like this, you are instantly struck 
by how you are the, in, in effect, the face of what deserves the award. And, and I think of all of the people that I worked with through the planning of PCODER from representatives of governments, of cancer systems, patient advocacy groups. And I think of the people I worked at with at the expert review table. And these were, were, were academics and clinicians from all disciplines. These were patients, survivors. These were, and, and we, inter we had the wonderful staff and the leaders of, of P. Coder and of CADF. And I say, I hope that you realize, I feel, this award belongs to all of us and that you own a part of it. Thank you so much.